there's different reasons why people have a difficult time sometimes with uh, with Judaism, and it's difficult sometimes when you're when it's someone close to you and you try to understand like what's the problem. It's so beautiful to keep Judaism. It's so special. It's so nice. And you try to understand what is the issue. And sometimes it comes from from a direction of of um, too much emuna. Meaning, you wonder like, like, why does Hashem, like, why does He need me to do all these things? Like, Hashem is, you need me to pray to you? Like, aren't you Hashem? Don't you know what I want? Don't you know what's right and what's not right for me? And so you need me to go utter the words and to say, Hashem, please help me with this and this. And if you don't say those words, if I don't say it, it doesn't work. It's very strange for us as mortals to believe that Hashem who's immortal needs us mortals to dub him. Right? And like sometimes, you know, when it comes to keeping Shabbat, so if you take the chicken out the wrong way, you know, if you try to get the pieces, the wrong pieces out of the right pieces, or the right pieces out of the wrong pieces, you have to be mindful exactly what you're doing and you say, come on, Hashem is so big, does this make a difference to him? Really? It's coming from a mindset of Hashem being too great and too vast and why does he need puny little me and all the things that I am? That's one side. Then the other side is when it's like what's the point? Like I want to see a benefit to Judaism. I want to see something tangible. I want to see results. The Judaism that we have often operates on a premise of future gratification. So one day you'll get to the next world and then you'll see it was all worth it was all worthwhile. Right? And we try to give a lot of gratification now by showing how beautiful it is to live and with a family life when you keep Shabbat and how beautiful kosher is. But it's not always true. Because like when you're a teenager, other things could be much more luring and much more interesting and much more gratifying. So the question would be how to show that Judaism has the gratification that we all crave. And so in order for Judaism to work, it's got to be something that, like, I see the point. Show me the point of why I need to be doing this. And show me the benefit and I want to see it now. That's how we are today. So is that possible or Nope, sorry. You've got to just buy into it. And very often we, we tend to think that way. Listen, it is what it is. This is Judaism. Judaism is what God wants. In order for Judaism to work, we have to reframe it. What do you want? What's the best thing you want? Okay, Judaism will give you that. So it's not imposing on you it's going to reveal and expose what you want most for you. And so, there's a slight letter, there's one letter, which if you, if you, if you read the word with that letter and you shift the letter, you'll see how everything changes. The Torah tells us, Ki tishma bekol Hashem elokecha. Nishmor et kol mitzvotav. Which means when you listen to Hashem, keep all his mitzvahs, and which which Hashem commands you, and you do what's right in the eyes of Hashem, then things will be good. And woe if you don't. Right? There's one letter over there which is very significant. Now, for those who speak Hebrew, what's the difference between saying ki tishma bekol Hashem elokecha? Versus, ki tishma lekol Hashem elokecha. What's the difference saying shma bekoli? Shma lekoli. Lekoli versus bekoli. Lame do bet. Shma bekoli. Right. Shma lekoli. In and le. Right. 
I think in slang, in slang Hebrew, you say Shema Bekoli. But you don't really the friendship in Shema Bekoli and Lekoli. But like you're saying, think about the word and think about what the, what the difference in the one and the other is. Shema Lekoli means, listen to what I'm saying. Typically, we, we sell Judaism in a Shema Lekoli. It's the right thing to do. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm telling you it's the right thing to do. When Hashem says, Ki tishma bekol Hashem What he's saying is, when you get what I am truly saying. He's not saying, listen to me. He's saying, listen to what's in my voice. Process, Process, Process it. Internalize what is being transmitted to you. Meaning, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm, I'm revealing to you. Listen to what I'm saying. Understand, like get the nuance in the words and you'll start experiencing something you never saw before. That's what it means. Not shma lekoli, shma bekoli. It means pay attention to what's truly being communicated and you will discover something totally different, a wholly different experience if you understand what's going on inside what I'm saying. So instead of saying, okay, you have to keep Shabbat, you have to keep Kashrut, you have to learn Torah, and you have to go send your kids and pay exorbitant tuition, and, you know, and, and live whatever, and pay mortgages that are crazy, and live a life like this, and, and all that, because you want to be Jewish, and you want to be living in that type of lifestyle, and then the person's like, what? Why would I want that? Maybe culturally it's worthwhile. How about if we flip the conversation? If we are shma lekoli, uh, bekoli, meaning if we start listening to what Hashem is actually saying. And if we flip the conversation and say, okay, what do you want? Tell me what you want. What do you truly, truly, truly want? I'm going to show you how to get to what you want. And I'll show you that what you want, you can get to with Hashem and with Torah and with mitzvahs. Wouldn't the conversation be different? So, okay, I want to make a lot of money and I want to be very, very super successful. And Torah appears to block that. Isn't that true? The more religious you are, right? So you can't work on Shabbos. There goes some of the main source of, of, of money. You have to, and, and you have to spend a lot of money on different things that Judaism demands, right? And it's really, really tough. So Judaism looks like it's blocking you. Show me how not only is it not blocking me, it's actually guiding me. It's actually revealing. It's helping me. What's the answer? Well, let's talk basics. You want to make a lot of money? A guy just told me now, right? He's, he's facing his first, he's a young guy, facing his first massive real estate deal that he's doing. And he says it's like massive. I don't know what massive is, but massive compared to what he's used to. And he's got an investor. And the investor is trying to enter into his deal. And he says, so the guy's coming along and I can't get him to buy into the deal. He's very apprehensive and concerned about so many little details. And every day he comes and he's worried about this and worried about that and whatever. And he's, and he's unsure and he's uncertain. And I can't get the deal to do because this guy, the investor, is not fully bought in. So I'm listening to the guy and I'm like, do you know what the problem is? He says, no. What should I tell the guy that will make him convinced that I could do it? You know what the answer is? Nothing. The reason why he's uncertain is because you are feeling uncertain. So what do you do if you feel... He says, yeah, so what do you do if you're feeling uncertain? I am feeling uncertain. What should I do? Feel certain. Good, but I don't. So how do you feel certain? But can you see how people like to follow people who are leading 
I know a feeling so. And there's a certain energy that beckons other people to you. Now, I think many of us get it, like, naturally. Many people have certain, like, superpowers. Like, you talk to guys who might be big atheists, very wealthy people. And the guy might even be an atheist. But if you listen carefully, you'll see, biggest believer ever. He just doesn't have the name of, like, the names we use, Hashem. And I don't believe in Hashem. But when I do a deal, I trust the universe. I trust the process. I trust the powers. Whatever it is, he trusts something that is out of his control. I'm going to call that Hashem. If you want to be successful, you have to learn how to do your thing and step back and let go. It's part of being successful. If you want to be successful, it's about allowing Hashem to run the show. Bitachon in Hashem, recognizing God, feeling His presence, is the key to anything. It's the key to being a parent. Good parenting, what does good parenting mean? Not trying to control your kid. And the kid will push every button that they possibly can. And the more you don't care, the more successful you'll be. Of course, if you really don't care, you won't be successful. So you've got to really care and really not care. And that's really hard. You've got to be very, 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 you know, into what happens with a child and noticing and worried and, 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 and concerned. And at the same exact time, you've got to recognize that you don't do anything and Hashem does the whole thing. Living with Hashem in your life is not negotiable if you want to achieve anything. It's about your ability to recognize that you cannot do it on your own. It's not possible to do it on your own. And that when you're trying to do it on your own, God says, go ahead, enjoy the ride. When you're ready for me to enter, I'll enter. But so long as you're trying to do it on your own, go for it. See what happens, knock yourself out. And at some point, we hit rock bottom, we can't anymore. And they're like, okay, I got it, fine. Hashem, yes. Building life with Hashem is part of living a normal reality. What Hashem says is these words. Translate that. Do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. So how do you do the right thing in the eyes of Hashem? Well, you ask Hashem, what do you want? And you do the right thing, which is what He wants. Lasot ha'yashar b'nei Hashem elokecha means that you should be straight, aligned with the eyes of Hashem. Meaning, understand how the system operates and align yourself with the system. And then you'll be very, very successful. Not, you better do what Hashem wants, what is, what is straight and right in the eyes of Hashem, but rather, align yourself with what's real and what's true. Not Sorry? Not limiting the amounts of faith and love. Exactly. Limits exactly. Your growth and every self-help book nowadays has essentially discovered one tiny little piece of bitachon and Hashem. And then they make a whole book out of, you know, I discovered how to negotiate with people. I discovered how to run life when it doesn't go your way. I discovered the best solution for loving other people in your relationships. I discovered how to make money. Let's go to the discovery behind discoveries. Everyone's trying to avoid the discussion about Hashem, about God. But that discussion is the core. Once you appreciate that, everything else just falls into place seamlessly and naturally. And so Judaism is not being imposed on you. It's asking you, what do you want? You want to be successful in that real estate deal? You have to be certain. Want to be certain? There's only one way to do that. It's if you have the most certain being guiding you in your life. So the question is, how do you get there? Well, we Jews have something we do every morning. Every single morning. What do we do? We align ourselves 
and attach ourselves to something true and real and eternal. And we do it through a process called davening. Very, very powerful process. But let's understand what's the purpose of davening, right? Why do we daven in the morning? Because what would you say? Why do we daven in the morning? To thank Hashem for the gift of life. Good. What else? All the above, right? It's to get ourselves aligned. Because when you wake up in the morning, the natural tendency is to start thinking about all the things you've got to do and all the things that are going wrong and all the worries and allow them all in. And you want to just like, nope, let's get connected. Let's get connected to Hashem. Step one of davening is the external. It's like, it's like, um, it's, it's not yet the actual real work. It's the external work. So it says that um, someone who learns Torah and doesn't, and doesn't have fear of Hashem, Yirat Shemayim, is compared to a gizbar. A gizbar is a treasurer who was given the key to the treasury. So he has the key to the actual treasure, but he wasn't given the key to the door of the outside. So there's this treasure chest inside the building, inside the house. He has the key to the treasure chest, but he doesn't have the key to the room where the treasure chest is. So what does it help? You can't get in. That means if you're teaching Torah, then you're giving, you're teaching over the treasure, the real treasure. What's the problem? You're not teaching the external key. And so it's not going to work. Can't teach Torah before you've done the external work. That's why we dive in every day. What we're doing is allowing ourselves to experience the external work, the connection. Okay, what do you want? You want you're feeling worried and concerned and whatever else you're feeling. So we get into davening. And through davening, there's a whole the whole process of davening is to recognize Hashem every step of the way. Right? To notice how Hashem is present in every single thing we do and to start singing Hashem's praises. And when you notice that in davening, like we once discussed a verse, just taking as an example. Zecher Rav Tuvcha Yabiu Betzid Koscha Yeraneinu. What does that mean? Zecher Rav Tuvcha Yabiu. I'm, I'm not, I don't actually feel revealed good right now. It's only a Zecher. I know that Hashem is good, so like I have a distant memory of the Rav Tuvcha, the wonderful things Hashem is doing. And I'm going to express, I'm going to Yabiu, I'm going to express that my life is good. I'm going to feel the gratitude of my life even though I don't see it right now. Ever tried doing that? When you're stuck in the middle of a business deal and it's really, really tough, and you're uncertain of yourself, you know what you do? Write down all the things that are going good in your life right now. Write down what we call a gratitude sheet. This is going right, that's going amazing, this is going unbelievable, and you write down all the wonderful things that are going on. You know what happens to your energy and your space? It's gonna shift from being uncertain to being happy. Very simple. What does that mean? You should be singing the good things, that are the righteousness of what Hashem is doing to you. At any given time, there are things that are hard, really difficult, and there are things that are glorious and beautiful and wonderful. And you decide which energy to live in. Want to live in that energy? You'll get more of that. Want to live in the wonderful praise energy? You'll get more of that. So what you're doing is shifting your energy from one space to another. Step one is called davening. It's recognizing Hashem every step of the way. And so we talk about Hashem as He is in this world and all the wonderful, beautiful things that Hashem is doing to us. The more you notice the glory of what Hashem is doing to you, the more you get of that. And so... It's, it's a very simple thing. If you want to be successful, you have to be certain. If you want to be certain, you have to attach yourself to one being that's certain. And so notice good things. Notice happy things. Notice godly things. 
I might not like what's going on, but I sure do recognize that everything that's happening is happening direct from Hashem. And it's just amazing to watch, right? That everything going on is directly from Hashem Himself. If you do that, and you do it every day, and it's, it's like, it's extensive discussion, right? So then you're ready for step two. Step one is... It's not just in davening, right? It's in davening and then through the day. So through the day, what it would mean is that, you know, if, if you care to, to actually notice and you just see Hashem's hand in your life, the more you see Hashem's hand in life, in your life, the more you'll see Hashem's hand in your life. Now we resist because we're like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in this position. I don't like this whole situation that's going on. And Hashem, get me out to somewhere else. And Hashem's like, okay, knock yourself out. Do it on your own. If you shift your energy, and in the middle of an uncertain business deal, you shift and you're like, right, the gratitude of how glorious things are, what Hashem is doing for you. Beautiful things going on. Notice Hashem. Go back to what you were doing during davening and notice it and shift your energy to a happy space all the time. What you'll discover is, and it's very, very, very difficult, because the message going on from the world is all the time, what are you happy about? Right? There's gonna be something going on on the outside to be happy, otherwise what are you happy about? And you're telling a different story. You're saying my happiness is coming from within. So I'm gonna notice good things going on all the time. I'm gonna, appreciate that I'm feeling very challenged right now. Okay. I'm going to write down all the good things and notice them and notice how Hashem's in my life. The more I do that, the more I get of Hashem. I do that when I'm based on my davening in the morning. This is all the external key. If you have the external key and you got into the room, then it makes a difference and you can actually access the real treasure chest. Now you're ready for the treasure chest. What's the treasure chest of Hashem? You know what the treasure chest is? Hashem has much more to give you than just being the creator. The treasure chest is called Torah. When you enter into the Torah, you discover what Hashem truly is. It's a process of entering into His turf and His space. So, make no mistake. Hashem doesn't care if you keep Shabbos. I don't think it says in the Torah ever to keep Shabbos. Does it? What? Right. What does it say afterwards? What does it say? Right. It says Shamo. Right? But he says, why? What does that mean? Six days, Hashem created the world. Right. Seven, right. In other words, I kept Shabbos. Right. Want to be like me? You can also yeah. keep Shabbos. He doesn't go, better keep Shabbos or else. He says, Why? Because this is what I do, so you can also do that. You know that there's the word commandment is itself an English word that we imposed on the Torah. The Torah doesn't say commandments. Even the Ten Commandments. Where are they called Ten Commandments? What, what, what are they called in Hebrew? What's, what's the English translation of the Torah that he brought? Ten sayings. Commandments is... Whoa, tell me what to do. Mitzvot means... Tzavta v'chibu, connections. A mitzvah is a connection. So it's true, Hashem, it's like, Hashem, can you please tell me something what to do so I can do it? Okay, I'll command you, I'll give you a commandment. But the commandment is because I want a connection. So the true mitzvah is a connection. And when you start noticing that, it's much more interesting to do it. Hashem is not telling you what to do. 
He's telling you successful people, very, very successful people, who want the success of Hashem in them, what they do is they take this certain time a week while in the middle of the most intense business deal and they just block everything and they stop it. And then they become thousands of times more successful in the bigger picture, in the long run. Hashem says, I do it and I created the world. Want to be like me? You can also keep Shabbos. Ditto for every single mitzvah. Some we notice more, some we notice less. Some are more mishpatim, easily to notice. Some are chukim. But every single mitzvah is a bond with Hashem. So can you see the two steps? Step one is you want to be successful. Want to know what you should do? If you want to be successful, is let go. Do your thing and then let go. Walk away from it. It's like an exciting way to live life. You're essentially living with Hashem in your life every step of the way. And you daven in the morning so that you download the power of Hashem to be able to do this during the course of your day. Once you've done that, you're ready to receive the inner key, the key to the inner chamber of Hashem, which is, what does Torah actually want? See, if I tell you right away, do Torah, you'll be wonderful, you'll be great things. You'll be like, who says? If you did step one, and you keep on doing it, you will start noticing miraculous things going on in your life. If you don't do it, you'll sit there all depressed, all in yourself, unable to express yourself. If you do it, you'll watch amazing things happening. And you'll be like, I want more of this. And then he says, come, let's enter into the inner chamber of Hashem. What's the inner chamber of Hashem? An inner reality, a oneness with Hashem. That's the Torah itself. Hence, Hashem tells you, Ki tishma be kol Hashem elokecha. When you start hearing what he's telling you, he's giving you the power that you want. You want to be happy, you want to be successful, you want to feel good. This is how. Step one is to start noticing Hashem in every step of your life. Do your life and just notice gratitude, good things. Notice Hashem, etc., etc. But don't get stuck there. Because there's a step two, which is entering into the Torah. Now, the book of Esther, is really a book of a connection between a neshama and Hashem. Esther represents the neshama. Achashverish is Mishe Acharit Vereshit Shelo. That's Hashem, the one whose end and beginning is His. Hamelech, and the story is written in cryptic format. And then there's this Haman. Who's Haman? The evil inclination wants to block you every step of the way. So notice how. When Esther wants to come see the king, where does she go? She says, what? She went to stand, Lamod where? She went into the palace, which part of the palace? Vataamod, she stood, Bachatzar Beit HaMelech HaChitzona. Apnimit, sorry, I'm talking about Apnimit. She enters into the inner chamber. So now, the way it worked was, the king had, there was the actual palace. And then there was the courtyard around the palace. Where does Esther go? Chatzar Beit HaMelech the inner courtyard. It's not yet the house itself. She's in the inner courtyard. Contrast that with Haman. Where does Haman go when he came to talk to the king? Chatzar Beit HaMelech HaChitzona, in the external courtyard. If you want to get close to Hashem, Hashem is in the palace. Want to get close to Hashem? You have to enter into the courtyard. The courtyard is an external space of connection to Hashem. There's two courtyards, the inner courtyard and the external courtyard. You first got to go past the external courtyard in order to get to the internal courtyard and then you can get to the home of Hashem. What's the home of Hashem? We said that's where Hashem resides. Hashem is in the Torah. That's what Hashem is in the Torah. Only Jews were given the Torah. It's something unique and special that we have. We were given Torah as it's ours. But you know, in the world, we speak about relation, relationship with God, and you realize that when you have that space and you let go, you let God, all these wonderful things that are spoken about in the world, those are very, very important. Those are the external courtyard. 
which allows you then to get a relationship with Hashem who's in the home. So if we want to get close to Hashem, we've got to get past the courtyard, except there's actually two. There's an inner, external and internal. That's why when you daven, first step is external courtyard. Haman is very present there. That's when you look around and you say, wow, I just notice Hashem's presence in everything. It's called Psuke de Zimra. Psuke de Zimra is noticing how Hashem is the creator of the world. This is a big world and Hashem made it. And I see Hashem's power. I see Hashem in the fire and the hail and the, and the snow and the mist. And I just notice God in everything. It's quite phenomenal, right? To, to just notice Hashem's power. A couple of weeks ago, I took a, with our yeshiva bar, and I was there, so I took a, a hike. So we went an early morning hike, right and early in the morning. And it was a 4 a.m. 4 a.m. hike. Best thing in the world. They all went to sleep on time. They were, and then I was like, I thought nobody would be awake. And they'll all come to sleep late. Four o'clock in the morning, the whole place is swarming. Everybody's up and running. Usually you can't wake them up, you know. They can sleep till 11 if you don't uh, wake them up. So four o'clock in the morning, all the guys are up. And then we drove to this place and we went on a hike. And we started the hike at like quarter to five in the morning, 10 to five. And it was pitch black. And you're walking through, we're trying to see where we're going, going up. And then you get up to this um, incredible, like a view, beautiful, beautiful place. We got up to a view and we learned there. We learned some chasidahs in the morning. And then we dabbed there like for second time. And as we dabbed in, you watch this, it's, it's, it's really not normal, even though it happens every day. And suddenly this ball of fire just like starts coming up, totally predictable, you know exactly what time, 5.48 a.m. The ball of fire comes up and just like you, it's, it's the most magnificent scene. And it's really unbelievable to be diving in chakras as you watch it. If you dive in Brooklyn chakras, you don't much see the sun, you just know the sun's coming up somewhere. But here you're literally davening and you know, because Jerusalem is in the east, so you're actually facing the east. And you're watching, like you push it, watching the sun come up. It is, it's truly magnificent. As you as you say the words of davening, and you notice, right, Hashem's power, and it just comes up. It, it's really an experience. And it helped a lot. The guys were like, really, it's like it gets you into nature. It gets you to feel Hashem. That's the chaser achitzona. That's the external place, right? Don't get stuck there. It's great to watch the sun rise, but it's only external. You haven't yet seen nothing. Now we move in to the place where Esther stands. That's Chatzar Beit HaMelech HaPrimit. Where's that? That's when you get into the brachas of Kriyashma. And you start speaking about the angels. It's like, notice something incredible that's going on in creation. Creation is gravitating towards Hashem all the time. Everything, everywhere is gravitating towards Hashem. And that's why it's so amazing when you afterwards go do business deals. There's only one reason. It's, it's very, very, very worthwhile. Highly recommended to become a businessman. Lately, I became a businessman the last year. Haven't done business ever. And, you know, my whole thing going on with my real estate deal and the yeshiva and everything, it's really just a business deal. My son t- told me, he said, you know, it's, you're in real estate basically, except for one thing. If you succeed, instead of getting money, you get a yeshiva. I said, okay. You know, but, but that's what it is. And you know what's amazing about it? It's that it's just another place to see Hashem more than you ever could. Like Shlomo Amenech says, I see you outside. When I'm outside of Torah, I see Hashem much more. Things just fall into place and you just like stand there with your jaw drop. Wow, how did that happen? The whole world is gravitating towards Hashem. Which means when you have a firm conviction in what you're doing and a connection to God, things fall into place. And then you notice that all the angels are gravitating towards Hashem. So Esther comes into that space. That's us. We're the Esther coming into that space. And then the king looks at you and suddenly you get a relationship with Hashem. And what does the king do? The king rolls out his Shavit Zahav, his royal scepter, the golden scepter. He says, come. Let's build the connection. The golden scepter is, well, that happens when you're in Shmon Esrei. Shmon Esrei is that absolute oneness, a bond with Hashem. And suddenly you feel the connection. It's like a space. <coughs> just noticing Hashem's presence everywhere. 
and the king gives you the golden scepter when you're in the chatzer, which means, he says, you're saying Shema, Ve'ahavta et Hashem Elokecha. You'll start realizing my life is about realizing Hashem in everything I do. I notice Hashem every step of the way in everything I do. Ve'ahavta, you'll cause Hashem to be beloved. Ve'ahavta et Hashem that He should become Elokecha. Not you should love Hashem your God. You should cause Hashem to become your God. Our purpose is to be united with Him. So imagine I started my day and I'm dabbling. And then I'm dabbling through the day. I'm noticing God and everything. And then Hashem just starts building a connection with me. Now I want to maintain the connection. I don't want to lose the attachment that I have. That's why. What do you do? You start talking Torah. Why should you learn Torah? You know what happens if you don't learn Torah, by the way, if you're a man? You know what the punishment for not learning Torah is? Karet. It's called getting cut off. You get chorus. So a lot of guys say, I don't know, it's too imposing, this Judaism. Basically, if I don't do anything, I'm just a good guy, but I'm not learning Torah, well, then I'm cut off. So I'm out. It's too difficult. It sounds imposing. You know what it really means? It's not telling you, whoa, if you don't learn Torah, I'm going to cut you off. It's like, if you don't breathe, you know what happens to you? If you stop breathing, what's the punishment? Chorus. You don't get punished for not breathing. You just get a life from breathing. That's what Torah is. If you're bound to Hashem and you feel Hashem's presence in your life all the time, you're not, li- you're not stuck in the wombs of life. So a Jew who wants to get connected to Hashem says, step one, I start noticing Hashem everywhere. That's my external keys. And in the external courtyard, the internal courtyard, I get into know Hashem better. Then Hashem reveals Himself to me. That's Shmona Yisrael. I start noticing that Baruch Atah Hashem, Hashem is in everything. I just notice God. Now I want to maintain that connection. How do I do that? It's called Taira. And every opportunity I have, I want to learn some Taira because I want to know what does God think about this? What is Taira? It's Hashem's thinking every step of the way of whatever you're doing. And if you do that, what does a Taira discuss? Mitzvahs. What are mitzvahs? Mitzvahs are expressing the life of Hashem in real, real living. You can't, you can't build a home. You can't bring the king into your home if it's dirty. A home needs to be clean. If you want Hashem in your life, your home has to be clean. You know what a clean home means? It's a heart that feels good. If you're allowing your heart to deviate after every little thing that goes on, you're not being a home for Hashem. That's called getting angry, getting frustrated, getting anxious, getting worried. All the things that happen to us inside our hearts. And you'll say, what am I supposed to do? That's so natural. It is natural. Hashem has a lot of work for you. I don't know why he does this. I don't know. Does Hashem really need us mortals? I don't know why. But watch what happens when you work it. Watch how it works. So we don't know why. We know that. You want to get yourself to a point where you're just feeling. Right? Who can go up to Hashem? One who has a bar levav, a pure heart. That's one of the most challenging things you'll ever have in life. That means you're never allowed to feel any negative feelings. And you say, great, what should I do? Let them go. That's what you should do. You should feel all the negative thing and go right back to your space of, okay, and Hashem's still with me. And you'll discover that things work amazing when you do that. And when you resist you think, this is nonsense. I'm just feeling terrible. I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling anxious, angry. Okay? Get yourself a punching bag. Punch the bag all the way until you get all your anger out. And then watch how you stop. Okay, now I'm not angry anymore. Now what? 
when you're in a good space, good things come towards you. Hashem is not telling us what to do. He's saying to you, listen, you want to la sota yashar beinei Hashem elokecha means to align yourself with Hashem. Not better listen to Hashem. Don't sell Judaism that way. Judaism is that you're aligned fully, that it's integrated into your system fully, me and Hashem are one, that it all just works. How do I get there? When I start realizing that Hashem is not telling me what to do. Hashem is actually telling me the best way to live life. And when I'm kitishma be kol Hashem elokecha, listen to what he's telling you. He's saying to you that if you start living your life this way and saying, what do, you, what do you truly want? Not you need to be happy. What will make you happy? Answer the question, what will make you happy? And start realizing that through not stressing and being absolutely con confident what Hashem gives you, He'll give it to you. And you dive in and you notice that. And you get close to Hashem. And you start seeing Hashem every step of the way and it's really hard. And then you keep that power, right? Which means and you have to listen to what Hashem does, get what he's saying, and you want to keep the connection at Kol Mitzvotav with all the mitzvahs of Hashem. Then what do you get to? You get to experience a La'asot HaYashar Be'nei Hashem Elokecha. There was one man who successfully did this. His name was Yosef. But Yosef's story began with his father. Yaakov Avinu was by the Haram Maria, and he went to sleep. Remember? What did he tell Hashem? He said, Hashem, I'm going to Lavan, and I'm really scared. If Hashem is with me, and He'll protect me and guard me. He'll give me bread and clothing and everything I need, and I'll return home peacefully. Then what's going to happen, remember? Then? What does that mean? Hashem is my God. If He protects me and guards me, then Hashem will be my God. Um, and if not, I'm out. This is Yaakov Avina saying. If Hashem protects me and gives me all the bread and food and He's good, and if not, He's not, that sounds like someone today. That's what we say. We say. Yaakov Avina was not saying, and if not, I'm out. What He said was, I want to live with Hashem present in my life. If all this happens, then Vehaya Hashem li Elokim. These are two names of Hashem. Hashem is the name of Hashem which is removed. Elokim is begimatria hateva, nature. Yaakov is saying, if I integrate my life, if I live my life and I am honest and real and loved one's going to give me every challenge in the book, it's going to be the most difficult thing in the world. But if I do that, you know what's going to happen? Hashem will be real to me. That's what Hashem tells every one of us. He says, you believe in Hashem? He says, of course. And if he give, doesn't give you food, doesn't give you everything else, you still believe in Him? Hopefully. But guess what? If you start noticing that Hashem gives you everything you need, and you start noticing that you have whatever you need, and you come from Hashem, and through connecting to Hashem, you start noticing you have it. And Hashem says, I'm so sorry. I'd love to give you miracles. I'm not giving you miracles. Do you know why I'm not giving you miracles? Because then it's me doing it for you. And I want you to accomplish this. What I want to get to a space is that you live with Elohim. Elohim is Hashem as He's manifest in nature. And Vehaya Yudke Vavke, which is God as He's miraculous, should be your Elohim. Yaakov is saying, if I succeed at this task, then miracles become second nature to me. I live in a miraculous space. Everything I do is absolute miracles. There's no detachment, me and Hashem. Miracles and nature become one. That's what it means. Vaya yudke vavke li lelokim. Yaakov is saying. He says, imi elokim imadi. If Hashem is, if elokim is with me, right? And he protects me on the way, and he guards me, and I start noticing Hashem every step of the way, and I return peacefully to my father's home. Meaning, I walked into the world, into my day. I did, I lived, it was a hard day, it was a tough day. I did all the things I did and I still have bitachon and like, it's easy to have bitachon if you're not facing a business deal. If you're facing a real business deal, if you're gonna go, go. Um, if, you, if you're facing a business deal and it's very tough and very challenging, right? 
and you're able to let go, and you still see Hashem, what just happens is, Vehaya Hashem lile lokim. You see what that means? That means the miracles become second nature to me. Most of us need miracles. When we mean miracles, we're like, Kriyas Yamsel, it's a miracle. Hashem is saying, you know, I ask you the question, which one do you prefer to see? Kriyat Yamsel? You've got a choice. You want to see Kriyas Yamsel, spilling of the Red Sea? Or would you like to see your life as it is right now becoming? What's the most challenging thing you have in your life right now? That thing being solved. Which one do you prefer? Second. Why? You don't like water split? Mm -hmm. right. Okay, water split I believe Hashem can do, but to make my life work, impossible. What if Hashem can show you that one? That's what Yaakov is saying. I'm going to live with absolute miracles in my life because I'm going to live seeing things like Kriyat Yam Suf and nature and it's just going to synthesize and it's going to be working. But Yaakov didn't fully achieve it. You know who, who, who did it? His son. Eilet Odot Yaakov Yosef. Because Yaakov was never a slave. He was never owned like Yosef was. He never really succumbed to the challenges of this world. Yosef did. Nor was Yaakov ever a real king. Yosef was. He was rock bottom and a top. That's why he gives a bracha when he tells Yosef, he says, Ben Porat Yosef, Ben porat aleyayim. Porat means to multiply. He says, Yosef, you've done the most amazing thing in the world. You've multiplied, you've increased the power of God to places where he never was before. The word porat means to multiply. It's also the same letters as tofer. Porat, pei vav resh taf, tofer, taf vav pei resh. Yosef was someone who was able to sew things together. Sew what together? to sow, S-E-W, to sow Hashem's presence into this world. What did Yosef do? He was a man who was stuck in Mitzrayim. Stuck, controlled, ruled, dominated. What does he do? Totally ignores the situation. He surfaces to the top wherever he is, Ish Matzliach, and whatever he does. He succeeds. Like, okay, I'm chief of the household of Potiphar. I'm chief of the dungeon. Then he becomes chief of the whole Mitzrayim and chief of the whole world, essentially. Because Yosef is what you want. Hashem says, you want to be like Yosef? You want to have that in your life? You want to have absolute success? Stop being stuck in the position where you are right now. When you go through, when you start noticing, Hashem is here to help you. What he wants to, you to do is to realize that God is going to be manifest through you. That the only thing blocking Hashem being manifest through you is you. And the more you unblock, unclog the pipe, the more of Hashem is revealed through you. The more absolute miracles you'll notice every step of the way. How do you do it? You first enter into the external courtyard. It means notice Hashem's presence in everything that goes on in the world. That's Psukhet de Zimra. You enter and you start noticing the Malachim. Everything's moving towards Hashem. Everything is in that direction. And that's what you get through doing business and doing things you do in the world. And notice Hashem's presence there. Enter deeper and you'll see Hashem in the home, right there. And Hashem reveals Himself to you. You'll start seeing things just fall into place. And every time they do, you go, wow, wow, wow. And now I say, you want the inner keys of the inner chamber? Go jump into the Torah. Because the Torah is where you'll find Hashem. And the Torah needs to be combined with mitzvahs. And that means every step of the way, every step of your life is absolutely aligned. So you're living with a good heart. Whenever your heart gets like lost, and you're grieving and worrying and crying and upset, you say, Bubale, you're just tired right now. Things are hard. Hashem is being manifest through you. And you start living a life like Yaakov began and work through Yosef. What you start seeing is, So what's Judaism about is the best system of how you can live the most unbelievable and incredible life just to be in a happy space, doing happy things, successful. That's what Judaism is. It's not imposed on you. It's just you. And if you're wondering, but why does Hashem need me? I don't know. But try it out. 
and try and notice how when you're living with a happiness and a gladness of heart, happy things come your way. And when you don't, you repel. And when you do Torah Mitzvahs, you become that person, good things come your way. It's a power that we have. To live straight.